What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Kicking the Wakachi, where we highlight individuals that are really taking their industry by storm. And today, we have a man that a lot of people call him the godfather. A lot of people call him Mr. Legacy. Today, we just got my boy Joe, the god. Joe, the Mr. Godly, Mr. Legacy. Thank you for coming in and, and kicking with your man, because it's been a long time coming. So I'm excited to really get you in here and get a lot of, a lot of gems out of you. Well, I appreciate the introduction, man. Thank you for having me, man. This is uh, I mean, this is my kind of like my second interview, so I'm very nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you guys, lie to you about that, but yeah, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm hopefully it's kicking with Kachi, so we can hope we get you a little more comfortable. And obviously, for those that are at home not watching, my boy Joe is a monster when it comes to the AR, A and R, sorry, not AR, sorry, the A and R and artist management side, as well as hosting his own podcast series, as well as his uh, weekly at this point music playlists that are always dropping. Dropping that fire of new artists, old artists, new music, old music, or just music that's popping right now for you guys to get your tuned right and loaded. So obviously, to get into you know all of it all, right? I want I don't want to speak your whole origin story because you know the people can look for that as well. But the rundown, right? Like going out, you're doing XVI management, seventeen management. Mm. Go out to Houston, you know what I'm saying? You're doing your thing. <laughs> I'm gonna let you pick up. I'm gonna let you pick up from where. Uh, that idea, right, of going all in on your management company, because I feel like a lot of creatives are probably at that point, thinking about that point, or already past that point of saying, yo, honestly, this nine to five is not for me no more. My passion is, mm -hmm. is calling me, but, you know, obviously real life is going to real life. So what was that like decision for you in saying new city, new fiance, right, coming with you as well and say, yo, babe, mm -hmm. I know I got this new promotion. I know I got this new job. We got this life set. Let's just deconstruct all of that and just start from ground zero with this new manager coming that we got going on. Oh, yeah. So um, definitely, definitely do your research. I'm like, ooh, it's a lot going on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, it all started, like, in 2017. Um, the idea of, like, managing, like, artists, photographers, models, it wasn't just, like, just the music thing. It was just, like, the whole media scene mm -hmm. wanted to help because I felt like the organization just uh, – I was helping a friend get, like, a model gig and – end up helping her get like three gigs at the time so it's kind of like a a good experience because like, i wanted to do that for people since i like i'm i'm not i'm not a model so like, i can right, know the right. person that i know the person that needs one so i can help out make that connection so um i had spoke to my uh fiance at the time and she liked the idea so uh just constructed it uh xbi and then I had the opportunity to, to move to houston for a job and then i was like yo let's let's do it like let's build it Houston, you know, I mean, we was living in Maryland at the time, so we moved to Houston and built it with the ground up from there, just uh, meeting, you know, the. I love Houston, uh, just going to different places. And then, like, a, right, friend, of right. ours, a friend of ours out there um, introduced me to, like, to the music scene, to, like, just the, the, the business scene out there, just the entrepreneurial scene out there in Houston, because that's mm -hmm. the one thing um, that's very popular out there, the entrepreneurial scene is very big, is, like, having your own out there and running your own business. So that's definitely, like, that's, like, so she introduced me to that scene. So I introduced to an artist, Mike Check, and then we started working. And then um, the, when we moved to Houston, we knew that we wanted to come back to New York because New York was like where the business was at. We knew that right, right. in order to make where the connections, you had to be there, just, you know, at least be there on a frequent basis. I'm not saying they'd be there every day, but, right. you know, you can still make those connections once in a while. So um, then the opportunity came back to move. Uh, we moved during COVID. And, you know, uh, and it was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like the wrong time, but at the same time, it was like, we had to wait for things to start opening up. And then right, right. Open up. Then we just uh, made our moves and uh, I started Golly Ties, as you said, the the, uh, the playlist podcast. So, yes, definitely started Golly Ties around as I moved to um, in 2020 um, before I come to New York. And then the playlist was starting Legacy was just mainly like my love for like bootleg uh cds growing up like hot 97 yeah um, right. hip -hop, r&b yeah yeah so i used to enjoy that all the time and um so i used to get those every month so that's like i wanted to also show my a and r skills too you know like hey i'm these are the songs i think are hot at the time and you know are coming out and i really think these artists was too as well like you know, on the sound that they really grow if they continue they'll be very you know very big if they continue going far so you know, stay started doing that continuously and took a break, you know, then they're trying to find that consistency, that battle, and now uh, building it more and just trying to turn it to something bigger next. You know, that's the next move is just what's the, making it bigger. So that's what exactly what we want to do, you know. 
And I want to get into um like a couple of things you like you say you talk about top down, right? Let's start at the beginning. One, like that that feeling of working with your fiance, right? Like you guys mm-hmm. have a relationship, you have a partnership of where you guys are building this life together. How has now bringing her on or her joining her forces with what she knows and what you know, joining forces to create this management company, how has that sort of affected the flow of the business? And then how has it kind of, not getting to your first event, affect the flow of your marriage as well? Like how has that kind of strengthened or, you know, diversified the partnership? No, um, it definitely strengthened our marriage because it was like something that we're both working towards, you know. Right, it's right. kind of hard to, you know, when uh, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody, but, you know, say if you're a doctor, you know, say I'm a doctor and my wife is, yeah, you know, right. I'm much my wife is a doctor and I'm I might work in construction. We have two different days, so we don't know how each other's day is gonna be or what the other person's doing. But for her being um, you know, she does PR, I know what that takes as a manager. It's like, okay, I know what the PR does. So it's like I know what she takes. I know that she needs to probably do this at a particular time. So she's gonna need that structure. She needs to be somewhere or, you know, she knows that I need to be out with the artist or I need to finish this deadline. So it's a communication. It's like I understand her role and I understand her day to day, which makes it much easier. And that builds a bond to like, all right, more of an understanding of each other um, and just creating that balance. Um, yeah. And then, like you said, it's the balance. So we know, like, all right, I know you're not doing nothing. You're not doing nothing. Let's schedule or let's try to make something happen or do something spontaneous. So it's, it's, the, it's finding the balance and finding, you know, each other's schedule of knowing what each other's doing. And that just takes time and communication, you know, yeah. that's number one, time and communication. That's great. And honestly, like, I love it because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love when, one, Black love, that's already the first thing. And two, you know, it's just this, this idea of uh, uh, building farther than just the marriage, right? Like, you can you can come home and, like you said, like you guys can do your own worlds outside and then come inside and do what you want to do. But it definitely takes a different type of strength and, obviously, communication and, and patience to kind of bring those worlds together and also work together in a, pers- in a professional sense. Right. So and getting into the mindset and the emotions of going all in on your creative passion. What was that first day like? Like you put your two weeks in and then last day at the job. And now here comes Monday. You don't got to go to your nine to five no more. Like, what what was the emotions? What was running and like saying, oh, wow, like I actually am doing this now. Um, that I was in Houston. You know, I moved to Houston for a job. And as I was out there in Houston, um, I was balancing the two. So I was, you know, I was managing um, two artists in New York while I was in Houston. So that balance is back and forth from trying to build up and gain yeah. credibility um, while also trying to understand, you know, the Houston network um, and um, getting to know that. Um, so balancing with a job, it was like, it was difficult because it was like I was more into uh, the music and more wanted to do that while I was doing yeah, yeah. my job. Um, and then just that moment it's like it was a situation that like a opportunity that where the universe gives you to like this is, might be your way out and like yeah and i saw that opportunity and it's like i'm gonna make this my way out and told myself i'm going all in uh for this uh for xvi at the time and then from after that and we put on an event out in new york in 28 uh was it 2018 yeah 2018 it was called mm-hmm. bam um, stands for Black Artists Matter. Uh, so we had a lot of black, we had black owned um, businesses, uh, a lot of designers. Um, we had the painters, um, uh, photographers came in and showed their work. People sold their merch. Um, so that was end up definitely, nice. and I nice. created a playlist. Yeah. I created a playlist of independent, you know, artists and made a playlist for the for the show. So that was a that was our event. So that was a great thing going all in. It was scary, man. I, I can't say it, it, it's not like. It's scary because I was in a new city. I wasn't close to right, home. I wasn't close yeah, to family. Right. So it was definitely, it was scary. But, you know, having someone that, uh, your wife, you know, my fiance at the time, um, support and like believing in what, you, what you're doing. And, you know, not to tell her story, not to a month later, she ended up leaving her job, you know. Right, so, right, right. So, um, so that was another huge thing um, that you know like i said we're, we're both all in so like i said that communication understanding having that partner that you know understands what you're doing understands that your creative mindset like and they have that same creative mindset to where it's like I, i'm trying to do i want to do this so badly and you know so it was just a, a dream of both of ours to go all in and that's what we did and yeah. haven't looked back since you know and that's beautiful right and and getting into now like the technical aspect of it like the passion is there 
what sort of education, right, formal and informal, right, did you kind of have to undertake to be a good manager of artists, of music artists, dancers, models, photographers, and also this event curator, right? Like you could always be the vibey guy, but then you also can mm -hmm. be the vibey guy that actually has a business, right? And that's you. So how did you, what sort of education did you kind of have to, you know, develop or learn to get you to where you are right now? Um, I, I can't say it's education because I honestly, I went to Howard University and right, my, major right. was psych my major was psychology. Okay. Um, so my, my my major had nothing to do with music. It was kind of like a passion for me. And I, I could say like how that came about is my life experiences. You know, what I went through through life. Um, um, I played sports. I was captain of some, you know, teams. So it was just like dealing with a group of people. So I know how to handle individuals, I guess, yeah, or, yeah. you know, how to communicate with people. You know what I'm saying? I know I have that conversation, you know, being if you're captain of a basketball team, I didn't play basketball, but like I played football, I was the captain of the football team. So like mm -hmm. communicating to my teammates, you know, this gotta do, we gotta move together as a team, we gotta move as one. So having that communication, um, putting on events, uh, you know, having communication with different people. So, you know, um, knowing how to talk to someone who's handling the door for you or someone who's helping with cleaning, you know, teach, trying to have everyone that teach, not teach, but talk to everyone at the same pace, the same right, right. Uh, tone. Um, but it's just, and the trust is also a trust thing too. People, uh, you know, be around you and just have, if, you know, I guess people feel comfortable around me. I can't really explain, yeah. you know, I can't, I can't explain how other people, you know, feel, but yeah, having, right. like, education is just life lessons. I can't say it was like, oh, I learned this in school and this, that. No, it's just the life lessons of how I communicate with people and how I am with people. So that's really how I believe, like, yeah, it was just life lessons. It's just life, you know, moving. And that's how I learned my way. I can't say education helps that because you can't teach how to talk to people. In books, right, you right, know, of course. Is, you know. Yeah. And then in terms of like for artists, you know, coming to you, got a, a couple big names on, on under your belt already that you're, that you're working with, managing Fergie Baby, right? You got, uh, let me check the lineup right now because I had it written down and I'm like, it's kind of crazy as well how, yeah, big mic check. Big Henny Mike, Mike Check, Black Bean, Fergie Baby, as well as working with obviously Muggsy McFly, as you can see right here on the McFly Day as well, and then all these other different creatives. Um, what's the process like in getting, you know, working with you and working with the manager? Because a lot of artists right now, as you see, there's a big wave of independent artists. So eventually they're going to need someone like you. So it's from the horse's mouth. What should they be expecting? What should they bring to the table? What should they be coming with? And how should they approach you in terms of, you know, looking for management? Um, right now, I, I can say right now, I'm not uh, at this moment, not uh, hands are tied for management, like, I you know, know, tired, right. but, um, but in, in the sense of what are looking for, um, dedication, uh, and consistency in your craft, you know what I'm saying? Cause if this is something that you're trying to do, uh, for artists, you, you have to put in the work, you have to put in a little bit of a little bit of time, uh, something that you're wanting to do if you want to be the star. How big right. are you gonna go? Like, are you just trying to make a couple of music to feel good, you know, just to uh to get it off your chest, or is it something you see going like, hey, I want to make this going on, I want to go a little bit further, I want to you know take care of my family. So if that's the case, then you know there's all different types of ranges how you can do it for the music, but it all depends on the consistency and how much effort you're putting into your own craft. You know, um, I'm learning my craft day to day. You know, watching interviews, um, right. listening to podcasts from time to time. Um, but more likely, it's just I'm, we're all perfecting our craft the same way. You want to get better in the studio if you're in there every other day, you know, practicing and getting better. The song is going to get better as long as you get in. The song is not going to get done if you don't go to the studio. Right. So I cannot, you know, so that, that consistency, I, I, you know, that's the consistency that we're looking for, that I would look for. Um, it's just your, how much dedication do you have to your craft. And do artists or have these artists reach out to you and then you, and then you work with them? Or do you seek out artists that you see something and you're like hey i want to manage you or maybe a mixture of both um so everybody that i've I worked with um so i work with fergie baby um yeah i work with mike check and i work with uh uh henny mike and uh black is a he's a photographer so i help uh manage with photographer he's a photographer uh a photographer and a director as well um so those are the two things those who i help uh manage now, uh, Fergie baby, um, I've been a, uh, I've known Fergie for for a while. Um, just growing up and being in New York and just being, being him with Skeeter Gang. Um, yeah, right. And 
Yeah, so it was very enjoyable uh, having him, you know, seeing him grow. And when he came out with Bleachers, uh, when he dropped that, I remember when he sent me the song when I was out in Houston. He's like, yo, bro, you can try to get out to DJs in Houston, you know, do what you can. I was like, all right, man, I got you. You know, got my support. Mm-hmm. So it was like, yeah. I was always watching from afar and, like, knew that he was going to be doing well. And if he stayed consistent, and he did, you know. As you see, he stayed consistent putting out music and, you know, growing with his fans. And you see where he's at now. Um, but I reached out to him. I had, you know, it was just uh, a point where I was just uh, wanted to manage. I was like, hey, man, look, let's, like, what do you think? You know, how you, you know, what, what can we do? I've been yeah, a fan right. of your music. You know, I've supported you. You know, um, what do you think about, you know, us working together? Because, you know, I've done the management, and that's where um, Mike Check, uh, for Mike Check, that was back in Houston. Uh, right. Me and my, me and Mike Check met through a mutual friend. Uh, and as we met through a mutual friend, we just, and he said he's looking for management. I was like, all right, let's let's do this. So this was somebody I just met, and you know, Mike Check, you know, become very close person to you know person in my life, um, very good friend um, of mine as well. So so getting to know him, that's meeting somebody new and building with that. And uh, Henny Mike, I uh, got introduced to his music when I was working with Major Stage. So like I was working, okay, you know, okay. looking up artists at the time and he was his music stuck out to me his voice you know his cadence so i really enjoyed you know hearing his music and his you know his um his sound and uh reached out to him recently like, hey i look at you know my family music and let's let's see what we can do you know what i'm saying i believe in your work so it's like i have to not say i have to but you know the belief i'm a fan first right you know right like I, i'm a fan first i'm gonna if you're gonna work and um and and being me and him went to high school together. We was on a football team together. So it's just oh, wow. Okay. Have, so that just automatically clicked, you know, back in high school. So it's I'm a fan. I'm I'm a fan. I want to work. So that's where my passion is going to come from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can always do the business, and that's fine, and I, that's great. But I, I I have fun with the passion. So it's like if I'm, if I'm a fan of the of the music, I'm gonna go a little extra hard. I'm gonna go a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna have a little more. I'm gonna have fun. That's the one thing. You know, that's the one thing with visit. Like I'm having fun with it. So I rather have. If I enjoy the music, why not have fun? You know, I, right. I enjoy music. Why, you know, you gotta enjoy, it is business, but enjoy. This is something that we always wanted to do. Why not be happy and excited about it? You know, I'm excited that you know get to listen to new music, get decided to hear previews, get decided to construct the story, how we get to tell people, and how you know we get to put this person, this person with amazing talent in the spotlight. You know yeah. how we how we make them shine. Like, like that's how I always look at it. Is like how can we tell your story to the world so everyone can look at you? Because I want everyone to look at you how I see you. You know. So. And I would say going into now showcasing like music and different talents, like the legacy volume tapes, right? Like start off with volume one, banger. So, but now we're at volume. I think you just dropped twenty nine. Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah, we like twenty six playlists. To be honest, I I be I be I be hours on one playlist so mm-hmm. i can only imagine like and i've seen you i've seen you drop legacy volume tapes like back to back to back like a cu- couple of days in between each other so how oh, much music man. are you really listening to like every day to to make your legacy tapes how how did the how do these things kind of come about and what kind of is pushing you to keep making these roll out um i do it every month um i've done it i try to do it every month because you know it's like you said it's a lot of music that comes out weekly and, yeah um so i try to do it every month and try to consume um as much all the music as i can in one week um and do it with a good ear um and that's really it um why do i keep doing it um i did it like i said when i first started it it was one i did it i dropped it on my birthday and you right, know right. I, and i was just like wanted like i said people to uh see my skills in A and R and when it's construction music, production, sound, why am I picking this sound? So the right, transitions of songs. Right, like right. that was my reason to like because I just moved back to New York. I was trying to like the reason I moved to New York was for business opportunities. So right. and it was COVID. And like the only way I was able to do it right now was like, hey, I have a playlist. Why don't you listen? We all inside. We can't really see each other. We can't be face to face. So let you hear my sound, how I work with, you know, what songs I'm picking and let you decide, you know, if you want to work and but you know, go from there. So just consistently, I did that for a little bit. And then um, I stopped at a certain point um, because I I started to work with more people. Um, So then took a break on it and then uh, felt like I I missed, it was missing something like, for me, it's like, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy listening. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed listening to everything. So it's like, well, I should, I'm working with artists. Doesn't mean I should stop not listening to new music. Yeah. So it's like, I still enjoy it. So why not continue it? So, um, 
continue back up. So it's like every month I'm, you know, we're dropping uh, just the songs of what we think is uh, great. Uh, out, that came out that month, you know what I'm saying? That sounds yeah. good, you know, the, the hidden gems, the deep cuts, you know, we're giving the people the deep cuts now, not when the album dropped two months later. And there's nothing wrong right, with that. Right. Dropping two months later, finding the song being better or good, you know, getting, you know, hits to it. But we like, hey, we know this is going to be a good one now. And we know it's going to be a good one three months later. So we know it's going to get hooked on, or we know this is going to make you become a fan of this person because this is a good song from their catalog. And you might not like the song that's coming out on the radio, but they got this one song that I think you might be a fan of, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite playlist? Uh, Out of the legacies? Yeah. I mean, you got 26, so it's probably a lot to already think about in your head, but Um, I don't know if you got one that you're ready. Yo, yo, play volume 17. I need that one right now. It it will always be uh, Legacy Volume... uh, Legacy Volume 1. Legacy Volume 10. Okay. And... Um, seventeen. Those okay. are the two. Those are the two. So one, ten, and seventeen. Because um, one was the first one, right? Um, so that was just like, and that was just me a collection. It wasn't songs that came out in August. It was just like a bunch of songs that's like I've heard and just all sound sonically good and just artists that I thought that were like really dope and right, really good. Right. I had like Flo Millie on there. Um, uh. Vino World, uh, uh, who else? had a bunch of people on there. Uh, Benny the Butcher, right, uh, right, right. Uh, starting that a boogie, but just just starting there. Um, that that sound, it was just I, I enjoyed it. It just reminds me of the summer. This is the time make it like, right, and those are the reason right. why I like the playlist because I can go back into like listen to Legacy Four and know that mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that was back in um, November. That was back in November 2020, just because that song reminded me what was going on in that time. And I know, like, oh, yeah, I was in Houston in November 2020. I was in there. Yeah. I went back to Houston for a quick second. You know what I'm saying? I can go back. Um, but Legacy 1, Legacy Volume 10, that was me after I, like, I took a little break because um, I was putting out Season 2 of Golly Ties. Um, right. So, so I put, like, a little break on the Legacy because like, I was focused on Golly Ties, putting that out. And then I was like, all right, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? Good, good song selection. I'm picking this. Um, and then 17, uh, I enjoyed it because I was like top of the year of 2022. Okay, yeah, okay. Top of the year 2022 of last year. And that was just, and it was a new art cover. So I was excited for it. So yeah, like, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, I, and honestly, I like volume 26. Um, volume 26. Volume 26 has... Uh, because uh, this is a new pattern that uh, that um myself and uh my team is putting together uh doing so it's something new like I said I'm just I'm going bigger with this so like I said right team, exactly yeah uh, so um definitely introduce to the team gonna know the team soon but um definitely yeah the way we put this together um selection of the songs is really great and yeah 26 is gonna probably be a favor of me because like like they're moments for me. And I could yeah. just definitely go back into that time like this was a good moment. And then in developing the team, right? I think uh, Golly Ties to go back a little bit boring time is supposed to be this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this behind the scenes, right? This candidness of what's going on with you, the people around you, your journey, mm-hmm. how you got through your music, man- how you got through your management company and this, all this other stuff. And then also candid conversations about love, relationships, um personal yeah. self growth, personal journeys and things of that nature. So what was the origin story in kind of trying to get all these amazing, you know, conversations but under one roof under this idea of godly ties? Um so it was godly ties came about uh just me listening to uh just music and more more or less it was about like me telling my story. I wanted right, people right. I want like you know I wanted to people to know my story just a little bit more in depth. Like I was living in Houston. I didn't think about I was coming back to New York at the time. I yeah, mean, I right. wanted to, but I did, actually, no, I, I did decide at that time before Golly Ties that, but I believe it was around the same time. I can't really pinpoint, but I knew around that time was moving to New York. But at the time making Golly Ties, it was like, I wanted to tell my story of how I fell in love with music. People get to know and know my music journey to like, I didn't have it. Like you said, I didn't have an education in music. I didn't, you know, right. I didn't grow up with saying like, I'm going to do music. I, I did the, I can't even say cliche, but I play sports. You know, I went to school, you know, got good grades. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, went to, uh, went to Iona, then I transferred to Howard University. So, you know, 
uh, the music thing, but I was, you know, throwing events. I was doing, the, I was mainly throwing events, but yeah. uh, I used to, but I curated, you know, parties and stuff. So curating the music right. at that time, you know, couldn't afford a DJ, so I had to make playlists. Um, so I want people to know that story a little bit about me and my journey. So like season one of Golly Ties talked about how I fell in love with music, you know, um, where it came from. Like I mentioned, you see the bootleg CDs of Hot 97. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, my first playlist ever named was Hot 97 Volume Banks. Yeah, um, wow. Um, and because Lloyd Banks was my favorite artist at the time. So that's why I called it Banks. So Hot 97 Volume Banks was my first playlist that probably still would mean to like college. It was just like the same thing over and over. Um, you know how that go, right? So, um, but then it started with that and then started where I, I got the passion for music and I, you know, get it from my pops and going to doing things with my dad and then um, how I started, you know, the idea of it and then reaching out to my wife, like, hey, let's do this together. And then knowing that, you know, things that when you're in this industry, there's our bumpy road. So it's like you go through some right. dark times, you go through some things that, you just can't go, you know, just that turns you, that makes you not feel good and just makes you feel down. Like, that's part of it. Like, uh, things happen, you know, um, in this industry to where you get your highs and lows. And, you know, I wanted people to know that story. Like, hey, I'm not perfect. I had to go through these things, too. It's not like, oh, this just happened and landed on my plate or whatever. This is like, yeah, I'm still dealing with life, too, but I'm still pushing forward. And I want people to see, right. like, that story. And then going into season two was just going, t still telling the story a little bit more about life and, uh, my journey, um, like I said, me and my wife, you know, getting married. Um, what was the time like in that, you know, season two is set in time like war in Houston. So it was like, what, yeah. what was going on in Houston around that time? What we were doing? How that feel? What made us feel? What made us feel good? What was the energy? Was it low? Was it high? Did we have good moments? You know, and then, you know, it ended off with um, uh, 2020 vision because we knew that we were moving to New York. So that's right. where, you know, season two, that's where it ends. And Oh, um, and that's where we are right now, season two. So yeah, right we're gonna now. get season three. I was gonna ask that as well. Like, <laughs> um, season three, it was supposed to come out this year, but you know, okay, things right. take time, and you know, maybe the story. My my goal will always was always for Golly Ties to always end up like on a Netflix thing, or yeah, something right. like uh on a streaming platform, just to see the story uh in itself. That was always like one of the goals. Um, but we'll see. Uh, season three and like. The interview style came just about because the first season was interviewing myself, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, questions that people can know. And then um, I got the second season. I got a couple of friends to help curate the music because I, I love their taste and, you know, love what they had, you know, love what they do. And I wanted to showcase that, you know. Right. And that was the whole point of Golly Ties. You don't know who you might know and who's around, like, you know, who's around. So it's all about Golly Ties. You never, like I said, everyone's everyone's connected. Yeah, and, golly and I mean, that's that's I essentially know. your your position as an A and R artist management guy, and also this connector. Like you are the connector of different people. <laughs> one person has their dreams, one person has their needs, and you're the person that can kind of make that happen in the middle. Like you, you are mm -hmm. the embodiment of that exact ethos. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. And then obviously, like I know we talked about season three, we talked about other stuff, but like what other stuff can we kind of expect from you moving forward? Uh, before we close this out um moving forward is great things from my artists I, um and also uh fergie baby got some stuff on the way uh mike Tech yeah i see it yeah and he got some stuff on the way um uh, legacy is going to be expanding um so just seeing that expansion just there's going to be a lot of expansion that's the next thing is expansion um and just expanding everywhere we can so that's 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 where that's where it's gonna be expansion. Okay, so that's, okay. that's what's next for me. So if you next time we talk and it's like it start things expanded, you see things. That's the next. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah. We was he was talking to me on my interview. Every if I see you with the millions of dollars later, I'm like, yo, yo, yo. Like he was on my interview <laughs> first. Like you know what I'm saying? Let me let me get a piece of that. <laughs> but I obviously like to end things off on a good note. So before we head out of here, is there like a moment, a highlight, or anything that's happened to you during your journey that you kind of like keep to your heart like yo like I really did that like I'm it kind of made you more confident and let you know like I am here right now doing what I'm doing every single day um it was when I went back to Houston um mm -hmm. in 2022 yeah I went back right. to Houston um I went back to Houston with uh I went back to Houston with uh and I, that's where I met Dizzy Banco um mm -hmm. and 
that moment because I told when the reason I left Houston was the music opportunities. Right, to, right. To work with stuff and bring it into connect with the people that I met down in Houston and make some type of move. So like coming back to Houston for music, for the reason I came to Houston was for music and to work with, you know, uh, one of the stars out in Houston, I don't want to say, but at the time, you know, um, and that was a full circle moment. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. It just, uh, yeah. It was a full circle moment at that moment. So that, uh, that moment right there, like I'm in Houston. I was like, I was talking to my friend. I was like, yo, this is what I was wanted to do. Just connect yeah. the bridge. Like you said, golly ties. I wanted to tie the connection, make the connection. So it was, that was a good moment. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing what I was, I'm doing what I set out to do. Yeah, it's like when you go back to your mom's crib and you're going back to your old childhood room and you see all the drawings on the walls, like what you wanted to be and all these things of like what you were dreaming of when you was a kid. And then you go back and it's like, wow, like I'm actually doing those yeah. things. And that was beautiful. Thank you, Joe, for one, coming by and kicking on me, man, and giving us a, a little piece of your story. I know the story has just begun, but I'm glad that we were able to catch you and, you know, able to talk to you about your journey thus far. It's been a real pleasure, man. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. It was great. Um... I hope I wasn't long-winded, you know. I no, like I, I love it when they're long-winded. I love it. I love it. I love all the energy. And I'm saying I love that, um, for especially those that are looking for, like, a, a music career but aren't exactly musicians. I believe that's what you wrote on your first uh, your first volume tape. Like, you're not a rapper. You're not a musician. You just love music, right? Like, yeah. you just love being out here because, I mean, from, coming from, you know, I'm from the Bronx uptown. Mount Vernon was just a hop and a skip away anyway. Yeah. You know, like music is in our DNA, whether we like it or not. So I'm glad that you're Vernon. embodying Shout that. You know Vernon, what I'm saying? Man. You're embodying you know. that exact essence of, you know, you don't have to be a musician to be around the music industry and also amplify and push the culture more as you're doing every single day. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. Like I said, it's been a long time coming. I know you reached out to me during COVID and at the time I was like, I don't know. Like I'm just, and like I said, I was just like, I guess I to myself I didn't like you said I didn't I didn't prove myself to that moment so it's like I'm here right, like, I'm, right. just, uh, I'm not about to talk my story yet no my story is not even right. no I'm not even there yet but I appreciate you on the journey watching and definitely supporting as well um not just watching you've definitely been supporting and I uh, thank you for having me this was a, a great 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 uh time. Of course, of course. Thank you so much, Joe. And you guys can follow my boy Joe at Joe God. That's God with the New York accent on Instagram. That's J O E G A W D. Make sure you follow all the Legacy Volume tapes on Apple Music, Spotify, and Title. 26 is out right now. Make sure you catch this fire. All my ladies, this one's for you. He got a bunch of female artists on there that is killing it right now. Make sure y'all listen mm -hmm. to that volume tape. Make sure y'all check out all the artists under his management label right now because they're blowing up and they're blowing up big. Before they go up, Make sure you catch that train. You can check out this interview at the DC Voice on Instagram and YouTube as well. Check me out on Instagram at Cost Out the Analyst. Once again, Joe to God, thank you so much for coming and kicking me, my brother. One thank more you, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, yes, of man. course. I'm going to let you go. And we out of here. We're going to talk soon. All right, man. Appreciate it.